Is it recording now? Yeah. Recording. Spike recording. Spike P. Richie Ridge. Okay, listen. Anybody know? Anybody ever have? It's gonna be quick. Anybody know how to draw? What do you mean by drawing? He can draw apparently. He wanted to draw for you. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm asking, not not for the board. No, no, not for the board. It's like it's it's, it's better if you draw it nice. For I want you to keep draw this game. Nice. Okay. okay. I want you to keep this. If you're gonna run an office, especially, I want you to. Um, Draw this meeting. You can draw it for draw me. If you're excited meeting? about that. It's not. It's not important on the board. It's important that you draw it because I want this piece of paper for you to keep. This is a workshop. I've run it in the morning, five, ten minutes here and there to new people. I think we have to run it more often. I just remembered today. Somebody, somebody gave me the, the clue. It was Zori. Thank you, Zori. And uh, uh, anyway, I think we don't run it enough. But has anybody seen the Titanic movie? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, somebody walk me through what happened there. They all died. They crashed the iceberg. Yeah. Iceberg hits, right? Hey, hey, hey real fast, real fast. This is really, really hard for me to say this because I legitimately don't, don't really care. But, but no, seriously, I was reading this book about yesterday. Remember, I told you guys yesterday some of the leaders. What did I? What did we talk about? The book. George Washington. George Washington. George Washington book. It's like a hundred little mini paragraphs of little things to be a better, just have decent behavior. Class act. Class act. And then one of the things, he talks about very, very little, very little things like if people are standing, don't sit. If people are walking, don't stop. Um, just stuff like that, very common sense. One of them is if somebody's talking, don't talk. If, if somebody's listening, um, don't interrupt. Like. If somebody's eating or reading or writing on a table, don't jog the table. Just little simple things. Um, if you're gonna sneeze, yawn, or uh, whatever, turn your head to the side and cover it with your mouth. Just little things that are common sense. Don't pick your nose, don't uh, bite your nails in public. Things like that, okay? And one of the things, it's like, and for me, like I said, I really honestly, legitimately don't care. I'm over it at this point, but I know when there's a new leader up here, um, who, who here has run a meeting before? I know Avon, Julian's run a meeting. Raise your hand if you've run a meeting. Here in this office? Yeah, yeah, I know in general. Okay, so we have a few people, right? So it's, like I said, for me, four years doing it, it's, it's my job, I'm over it. I know most of you guys, uh, in a year from now, I'll never see you again. But, but so some people that get here on the first time, it's really like, it, they get really nerve wracking. Who was nervous the first time? You're nervous the first time. So it, one thing that really destroys the confidence of the speaker, it's when they're like trying, they've prepared for this meeting, they got their notes, but then people are just distracted in the back, they're doing side conversations, and, and like I said, I'm not trying to impose to you that you listen to me. You are totally, you have totally the freedom to walk away, I'm not gonna ask you to come back, uh, or take a break, or go to the bathroom if that's what you, sh but, but try when there's a new leader, especially speaking, what we're looking for is people that can just be interested, even if it's the fifth time you've seen this meeting, that you can be like, well, I'm gonna see it again and I'm gonna be the most interested person. Just just for the respect of the speaker, again, for me at, at this point, <coughs> don't do your thing. But um, I want, when uh, Philip comes up here and runs his first meeting, I want to, for him to feel that he is interested, that Fred's interested, that most, is that fair? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can we say that? So yes. who, so Titanic movie, who's seen it? Who's, okay, wait, wait, raise your, put your hands down. Raise your hand if you've never seen the Titanic movie. I don't know. Really? Like Melanie? Come on. I've seen Clip. I don't know. You've never yeah. seen it, bro? DiCaprio? Come on. I've never seen it. Save it for the movie. So, uh, so uh, who has a, who is confident in giving uh, Tyler a 10 second recap of this movie? Yeah, I'm Josh, give him a 10 second recap. Water, it's iceberg, breaks in half. People don't know. She gets the jewel. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> People die like frozen in the water because it is. <laughs> the ship really crashed. So, three. so anyway, anyway, the point of the Titanic theory. Anybody knows why did the, this was one of the biggest ships in the world at that point? Huh? Ship that couldn't sink. It was a ship that couldn't sink. 
And it's broke. Like it one job. Broke. Two hours. And two, three hours completely broke. Anybody know why? Because he drove Yes. Well, how do you Hey, you must know. Are you a Marine or something? He's a realist. He's a you realist. Too. He's a realist. He's a realist. No. Let's hear him out. Notes. So the chambers of the boat to shut off the chambers from the front to the boiler rooms, the engine, uh, were meant to be closed or open. But He's seen the movie. He's seen the movie. <laughs> no, it's part of the They were not. It's part of the They didn't go they didn't compartmentalize. Would you agree? Yes. yes. Like, if the boat would have cracked, water comes in, but the, there's some sort of system that would have closed the door, only one part of the boat would be destroyed, if it, even if it's the engine area, but it wouldn't sink because the, the boat would hold the water and the water would not keep going in. Would you agree? Yes. So, uh, this is, again, for you guys that are looking to teach this, okay, it's called the Titanic Theory, and it applies to business very well. I remember Chang running this, and, and the whole point is you're going to draw a boat. So if you're good at drawing, oh man, it's a boat. Mm. I just do this. Oh, there's somebody in the office. Big old boat. Yeah, big old boat. What am I actually drawing? A boat. Oh, I can draw that. Dude, I'm drawing that. I can draw that. And this, okay, for you guys that don't uh, know those lines, those mean water. Okay. <laughs> it's correct. Water. Okay, so now we're going to separate the, the boat, right? And let's just say boats have millions of compartments. But now let's look at you are the boat. You ever seen those quotes, the very true quotes? It's so funny now, Instagram just kind of teaches you your life. <laughs> you see those quotes that says like, hey, the fact that uh, uh, it's like, like imagine water being negativity and you being the boat. But the fact that you're surrounded by negativity doesn't mean you're drawn, you drawn. Um, you sink in it, right? The fact that a boat is surrounded by water doesn't mean you sink. It means you can stay afloat. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. If you let water in, you can go down. Well, it's the same with negative people, right? You can be surrounded by negative people. You can be at home and people are not positive and you have people telling you to quit. The only one job that you actually came with, with a better attitude than a cubicle one, you, you still get people that love you to say that you should quit and things like that. That happened to me a lot. Anybody relate to that? It's super normal. Like, you know, one advice I'll give you there is don't fight it. Don't just tell her, well, I'm going to get rich and, and, and you suck, mom. You never made more money. Don't go that route. It doesn't work. You might as well say, you're right. You're right. Can I just get support? That's my advice for you. If you have somebody battling you like that, even a very, like a spouse, a very important person to you, if it's a spouse, you should bring them around the team so they can understand, like, this is actually a normal group of people that just have a little higher ambition than your average Joe out there, but that's it. Anyway, water, okay? Now, psychology or analogy is you're the boat, and uh, the water is just everything else trying to, you know, get into you, right? So let's separate the, the boat in three different compartments. So if you look at our business, what are the three, think about a whole day. What are, how would we divide the day in three compartments? John? Office. You want all three? Yeah, I would like all Office, three. Office, uh, field, and home. Yes. So we're going to do draw a line here, a big line for compartment number one. This is compartment number one. It's the office. Or let's not call it the office. Let's just set, forget the job for a minute. Let's just call it the morning. AM. AM. AM time. Okay? The AM. AM. And then another compartment over here. Evening. So this is number two. We're going to call this the field. Field time of the day, which involves everything. And then number three, Boom. we're going to call it the pump. Um, okay. Cool. So now let's just talk real quick about negatives. Let's talk about water. How would water get in the boat? So let's uh, talk about in the morning. No, forget about the job. You can say things about the job, but you can just say things in general. Tell us something that in the morning has just got you frustrated and pissed you off. Uh, traffic. traffic. Okay. Traffic. Andy. <coughs> well, Andy, I, I, saw, I saw your hand up. I don't know. If I did. Where are you at? Yeah, was Andy? Kid not responding. Oh, What's that? Kid, child not cooperating. Okay, kids. Kids can definitely be time yes. consuming in the morning. Alejandro. The cold room when you wake up. What? Like, what? Wait, 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 wait. When you wake up, you want to get, you want to be warm. Yeah, no, but you want to be warm. Uh, but you want to stay in the bed? It's hard to get out of bed. Yeah. Is there negative? You told It's hard to get out of bed when it's cold. Especially in the winter. Hey, guys. Hey, listen. I, I believe the alarm's not the problem. The problem is you have one. We all have an alarm clock. 
point of it, of the alarm is to get rid of it one day. Oh my god. Yes. Tired. You're tired. What, hey, anybody got like dressed up and then you stain yourself with breakfast or the coffee and you're like, mm -hmm. coffee no, on the white shirt. Right? So like, Damn. coffee stain. Anybody got like, what? anybody got woke up and like, car issues. Yeah. My grandma. Or anybody woke up and your car was towed? That's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not, it's not no. car issues, it's car missing. That would hurt. <laughs> Would you agree that would get you frustrated? Yeah. yeah. Anybody else? Mo. Huh? Stuff you step on your toes. Mo got like big toes. JD, you're unprepared. I'm prepared. Hey, if you didn't, if you didn't go to bed and like prep, some people really like to leave like they, they're like I know probably Ami before he goes to bed, he knows what he's gonna wear the next day. Am I wrong? Yeah. Ami's melancholy, so he's preparing the day really well to just go into the day. There's no thinking time, it's just execution. So he looks so sharp. Doesn't Ami look sharp? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Always. 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 He's like, oh, dumb. Never He's like, disappoint. Stop. You know, I, don't know I, don't know. I don't like how to take compliments. <laughs> just like that. Give me more. I know. It's, hey, watch when you give a sanguine, Ami's a personality sanguine. When you give a sanguine a compliment, they don't know what to do with their hands. They get awkward. <laughs> <laughs> now, where do I put my hands? Everybody's looking at me. Loud, loud noises. What else noises. pisses you off in the morning? <laughs> loud noises. Yes. Loud, loud noises. Loud. Somebody said spouse. Spouse. Please fix that. Spouse <laughs> <laughs> should be the, a good reason to wake up next week. Miss Brown. 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 Miss Brown
Dog mess, oh, right? Dog mess. They ruined the sofa. <laughs> kids, kids won't go to sleep. Kids don't sleep. Oh, yeah. Cooking. Yeah. Well, we should make kids. Kids. Chores. Must have no bed. Negative. Maybe not late. Looks like no pool. I'm being so positive. Nope. Traffic when you go back home. Anybody got stuck in coming back from Dallas? Sometimes there's traffic at 8 p.m. and I go, what in the world? Why? That sounds. I just been like too many people in Dallas. Anybody like you're like you're like done with stuff and it's like. You're like, okay, now I can have dinner, and it's like, it's midnight. <laughs> yeah. Where did they go? Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Read in the morning. No. Read before you come to the office. Five minutes. Can you squeeze five minutes? Yes. yes. Bills. What else, Sarah? That's what I have to story. Anything else when you go home? Movie. Anybody? Don. Dion. Bills. What's that? Roommates, what about your roommates that have no goals? Hey, your, your unambitious roommates, they only complain about how much you work as they, at the same time, they ask you for money. Devin and Wade. As they make money. They're very funny roommates. We got comedians. <laughs> I love those. Yeah. <laughs> what else? Anybody else? Arguments. Uh, Bill. Spouse. They want argument. Oh, oh, so now spouse. You're pissing me off in the oh, AM and the AM. But hey, spouse could be like, I don't think you should wake up mad with my family. That's every person. But hey, what, you, you might get home, your spouse is be upset, you're home late. to be positive, yeah. and your spouse dumps all of her day on you. Mm -hmm. If you're the man of the house, then you, you gotta take it. survive that. Yeah. You gotta take if it. you're the man of the house, <laughs> if you're the lady and your man is, I guess I'm gonna have to get into the opinion. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys. You shouldn't allow your 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 if you're if some some man's coming up to the house and dumping all the negatives on you. Anyway, I'm not, I'm gonna keep my opinion right there. <laughs> you should you should consider that 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 person there maybe they're confused. 2022, you know, at this at this these ages. Not going to Sorry, just, yeah, hopefully YouTube doesn't censor me because I'm just saying my opinion. But it's, that's okay, that's just my opinion. You don't have to follow that. You don't have to be successful to, you don't have to follow that to be successful at all. This is a very simple business. So anyway, do we all see, do we all agree these are, whether you relate or not, these are all things that happen to you in life. <coughs> yes. Do any of these things change? Forget about the field for a minute, AM or PM. Does it change when we uh, take a career that we want to do well in? No. 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 Your dog's going to say, like, what do we, can we call this life? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Life happens, right? Some people yeah. actually still be able to go to work. Some people figure it out. Some people don't. And the difference is always the person because everyone has some sort of life situation going on and everyone believes their life situation is special. Because it is. Because your life is special to you, right? But when you say it out loud, you realize, oh, wow, like people are going through other stuff. It becomes less important. Do you agree? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, however, it does, that doesn't mean it's less important to you what you're going through, but it, it does it does work the same way. So let's assume everybody goes through a day. You're never going to go through a whole day. Your boat's never going to go without touching the water. Mm. So the point is, when what I, what, I, what I learned with this theory is the compartments, right? Like some, how many times, because I know I've done it, how many times you let something that happens in the morning, like your car, and, and you get to the office or you get to the field and you still have it in your heart, you still got it in your chest and you're worried about, which means the compartment opens. And then what happens to all the water that, that's flooding compartment number one? Where does it go? So how do you think you're going to do in the field? Not well. Not well. It's an ability. Listen, the, the answer to this is discipline. The only way you can do it is discipline. There's m methods and tricks, but at the end of the day, it's all a mental game. It's your mental fortitude. Are you mentally weak or are you mentally strong? Everybody's got it. Hey, if you don't have something, if this happened in the morning, don't worry. Some negatives will happen to you in the field. Don't worry. You know what I mean? Like if you had a perfect morning, you're about to get wrecked in the field. Some people get in the field and they, yeah. Some people, some people go in the field, they do three sales right away on their first two hours and then they, they expect like greatness. And then from, from like four to eight, three, they get wrecked. And it just really hurts your attitude because you end up at three and you don't say anything, but in the bottom of your heart, you know you had a horrible day because you know you did two or three, but it was like really the first hour you just got like lucky. Maybe you got a call back or whatever. But how many times do we let unpreppedness, like some of you guys were talking about being hungry. I really think you can fix that by just being prepared. It really just takes the discipline to take time 
on Sunday to meal prep or on Monday night or on the day before, or go to Walmart and actually buy snacks that you can take out with you instead of like, you shouldn't be, if you're going to the field and like you're already waiting for your break to go get food, first of all, that's financially bad for you. And second, that's not gonna work out. Like you can't go in the field hungry or thirsty. It's not gonna work. Like the field requires the most attention from you. It requires the most of your energy, the most of your, you gotta give it all you got. If not, you're not gonna do well. So if you go in the field and you're already like thirsty or whatever and you don't want to stop because we, we, don't, we, don't, we tell you not to stop, that's already bad. But hey, how many times, the point is, do we have the discipline to close the door? Let's talk about the AM stuff. Let's talk about it. Go to your offline, dude, I had a horrible morning. You know, I go to sometimes to, to my offline, dude, I'm tired. You know, I went to bed at three in the morning. I'm here at 7.30 or at eight. I'm tired. But I don't want to pass that negative on to you. I don't want it to let it affect my morning. So I, you want to shut the door. The way you do that is by saying the negative to an upline. Don't pass negative to your cross line. But go to your upline, talk about what's going on and what you're a little pissed about. Most of us, you, bless you. Most of us just need to be heard a little bit. Close the door. By the way, teach this to your spouse if their spouse is struggling with this. Okay, in the field, what's for your spouse would be whatever their regular job is during the day. Do they have problems too? Even if they're not getting no's in card fails? Yes. Hey, their kid, kid calls. Or, your aunt needs you and you're the only person on the face of the earth that your aunt needs right now and you have to leave your job because your aunt or your uncle Bob needs you. Like, and whether you choose to go, if you choose to go, you're saying no to your job. If you choose to stay, you're saying no to your uncle, so you're fucked anyways. <laughs> Would you agree? Yes. Fine. Violent, sorry, messed up anyway. So point being is, how many times you let the no's go in the field and you go, please, I, I really beg you to do this, especially for the guys, like go, get no. And don't go to home and dump them. Don't go home and like to your spouse if you have somebody there and talk about how miserable your day was. Like, does she? How do we expect her to just make us happy later? Or how do you expect him to make you happy later? All you do is take all the negative from your day, you swallow them, and you vomit them on your spouse, or on your kid, or on whatever, whoever's there, on your roommate. Some of you guys that are roommates in here, you're you're doing it on your cross line, so you just. You, you have a bad day, and then just to finish it off, you go you go home to ruin your somebody else's business because your cross line is in somebody else's team. And you're going home, and you're going to talk to your roommate cross line about the negatives, which is going to hurt Glody's team because that person might be on Glody's team, Andy's team, or John's team, or Avon's team. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's not fair. It takes the discipline to, like, shut the door. Nobody cares. In 40 years... Nobody's gonna ask you about the fucking mosquitoes that you had on Thursday on September 12 when you had this door-to-door -door gig that you probably ended up quitting or, or making it through the program. Either way, listen, don't take to the house. You got to be able to shut this door. It's a part of being, it's a part of maturing and like growing up. Like, hey, before you open your mouth, here's what I challenge you to do. We love being impulsive and whatever, but like, hey, Titanic theory, you know business professionals, military people, doctors. Like, can you imagine if they just like just say what they think all the time? You gotta run it through a, a brain cell a little bit. Hey, before I go and talk to Don about my day tonight and about how much my errands suck, does this, does this help Don or does it just help me to just vomit stuff? Because don't you feel good when you throw up? After you throw up, you feel good like, oh good, right? But like, wh how, how does it feel if you're thrown up on? Well, that's, that, hey, there's no different with this. It really is no different with the negative. I know you guys are laughing, but does it make sense? Yeah. yeah. Like, this is what we do. Like, dude, you know all the liars that were in the game today? I got this person lying on me. When you say that, who does it help? No one. You're only saying it to, to, to your own flesh. It's just selfish. And I have to learn to control this because I'm, I'm, I like to talk. I like to relate. I'm, a, I'm an outgoing person. You have to shut up. Like, does it actually make sense for Fred to listen to me talk about the, the property managers and the car fields that I had and that everybody was Vietnamese? Or am I just saying it because I just want to feel like somebody, like you're just say, putting yourself out there so that somebody can make you feel good about something. Like, let's be honest, okay? If you're gonna grow in a leadership scale, you gotta learn to shut the door. And a lot of times what that means is to shut your mouth and, or before you say something, run it through a brain cell. Or if somebody even asks you, so you might have somebody ask you about negatives because they're like searching for them to relate. You had a bad day too? <laughs> <laughs> you were in that same area. 
people do that. <laughs> you gotta be like, hey, tomorrow's a brand new day. And it's not being fake positive, it's just actually trying to improve up. You're trying to correct yourself. I beg you to learn how to do this. Hey, you had a bad morning? How can you shut the door? Don't let five bad minutes of your morning affect the whole day. Please don't let it affect your, God bless you, don't blame your kids for it or your spouse. Like, well, I have fought with my spouse, that's why I have a bad day at work. What? Wait, what? People do that, don't do that. You guys can, does that make sense? Yes. It's difficult. I understand it's difficult, it's very, a lot easier said than done. I always do a chart for myself. If you're like, Ruzzo, how did you get good at it? Because it's very difficult to get good at it. It's like, you got, you're gonna have to throw some negatives out, throw up and, and kind of clean it up and like, like, ah, crap, I did it again. Sorry about that, apologize. You know how I did it? In the field, I did two things. I did a T-chart, it's what can I control and what can I not control? Controllables and uncontrollables. And I would write it down. What you need to write it down. No on the phone, on a paper. And I would write down the things that were messing with my head, the things that I was worried about. Like, you know, one day my phone ran out of battery. I wanted to change my phone. What am I gonna do with the phone, blah, 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 blah. And I realized I'm in the field thinking about my phone so the customers don't care about what I say. So I would write down all the negatives that you can, con and put them on a chart. And then, genuinely, you don't have to show this to anybody. It's just for you. It's, there's a power of the visual. Can I do something about it? Hey, your mom is sick and she needs you to go home. Can you go home? Now, is she gonna die? Is she in death day? You go home, right? But if it's like a normal thing, you can't go home until you finish work. So should I worry about it or not? Can I control it or not? For example, on that example. You can't control Can you make her unsick right now? No. No. So if it's on this list, you just gotta not worry. You have to like say it out loud. Like again, you gotta throw it up, say it out, but I can't do anything. I just can't do anything. It's like, hey, you get, let's say you make a mistake, you got a traffic violation, they throw you in jail for a night. It sucks. Okay, once you're there, it's 10 o'clock at night, they're not letting you out until at least the next morning. Would you agree? Yeah. yeah. So you can stay in behind the bars happy or, or you can just cry. But if you cry, does it help? <laughs> no. <laughs> then you gotta not cry. Does that make sense? So I always made a list of what can I control? Listen, if you can control it, if you are worrying, but you gotta be honest with yourself. Don't fool yourself. If you can control it, then control it. You know what I noticed? The last few, th the, the, what I noticed is no matter how, what the negative is, and again, the boat can get as big as however many negatives you wanna go through. If you have a team, you can do this exercise with them. At the end of the day, there's very actually few things you can control. Anybody wanna guess one? Pitch. Your pitch, your attitude, yourself. Hey, attitude. The way, you know, the, the biggest thing is how you react to negatives. Anybody got a friend in COVID that thanks to COVID they had a great year? Raise your hand. Okay. So, like, they took COVID opportunity as an, uh, they took advantage of it in a good way. Does anybody know somebody else that the other way around? They, they COVID happened, they're like, mm, I have been out of work for two years and nothing went well for me because of COVID, and they blame COVID. Mm -hmm. So, do you see, like, how two different people reacted? To the, same negative. to the same negative, completely different. Mm -hmm. Anybody did the leadership quiz, E plus R equals O? We yeah, talked about success was, principles, yeah, Jack Canfield. He talks about an example of two guys sitting in the same car, eating lunch, and in the middle of the break lunch. Anybody know that? Who's read that chapter? I know Chloe did. Did you, did, did you, did you, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It's two people that work for the same company, in the same car, uh, on a break <laughs> for lunch, and both of them, um, they, all of a sudden, an earthquake starts happening in LA. <laughs> Earthquake. One of them is like, dude, oh my God, we can't make it back to work. Uh, and he's just pissed off. The other guy's like, not much I can do about an earthquake. <laughs> we can't go back to work. Phone, like, connection went off, so can't do anything. Can't call my boss, tell him. My boss will probably find out there's an earthquake. And he has his meal prep there. He has his lunch there. He, he starts eating, play, <laughs> play some audios, and, and start listening to a podcast. It made the earthquake a, as positive as you can make an earthquake look. <laughs> Yeah. And the other guy in the same car under the same circumstances Freaking is just complaining and upset. Because, well, my wife's not gonna, and my boss, nah, nah, nah. it's like, what can you control? I used to do this on a piece of paper, and, and I would literally, like, for like six months straight in the field, I promise you. I used to even, when I was, when this would happen to me in the field, I would go back to the <coughs> car, park my car in a different place, and mentally start my day over. Because when you're like, when you're in the field and like, you're in your head and you know you're in your head and people are saying no to you left and right and they just don't even want to see your face. It's really, you know you're the problem. Yeah. Keep it high. And you just gotta restart the day mentally. Yeah. I already even parked the car in a different spot so I could be like, start the day. I would throw away my tracker, I'm at zero and I, and I start counting from zero doors. 
my goal is to get to 40 talk again or to 20 if it's half of the day and I, I just like anything that's happened in the past I just don't I count it off like it was my fault I that's it starting a new day let me control what I can control you can talk to a customer create a bubble of enthusiasm if you're not excited about what you're saying here's the thing a trick I told Yvonne yesterday you know how about you do this before you pick up the phone and make a phone call click on voice recording on your phone record your pitch to a customer do it two or three times and then listen to it listen to it and don't even tell us you can walk it through me if you want to but listen to your own pitch and ask yourself if I was a customer and I listened to this am I excited to continue to know more and buy it if you go to the door and you're like hey did they tell you about the water and like you're pouring all your negatives because you're still not close the door so you're like hey did they tell you about the water we're just gonna drop off you forget to say your name you don't say anything hey we're dropping off water here for Amazon all the community's getting it um, we're gonna be here on Monday just grab your phone and I'll just show you real quick I don't need water well why not? Why are you getting water? Where are you getting water from? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, where'd you get? Okay, but have a great day. Now, and then record, and then listen to it. Does it sound exciting? No. Would you buy it if you were the customer? No. If you were interrupted your Netflix show or your home cooking or whatever you're doing at home at 2 p.m., which is already confusing, <laughs> would you be would you be interested or not? And that's a good way to know. And you can just be honest to yourself. You don't even have to tell us. You can tell your uplines, hey, I, I caught myself. But listen to your own voice and be like, would I be excited genuinely if I was the customer to, to buy something from this person, no matter what it is? I'm telling you. I'm telling you if you listen to Genesis, it doesn't matter if it's Frontier. You think she'd do well in Frontier? Yeah. Yes. I think so. It has nothing to do with the pitch. It has nothing to do with She's excited. So she's making customers. So customers are like, shit, I don't know if I need that, but that sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> it works. <laughs> it's legit that. Okay? And it's, it's shutting the door. Okay, when you go home at night, you're tyrant. Don't let new morning, new day. Dude, one day we're gonna die, bro. <laughs> and like, nobody's gonna ask us about this. So like, you might as well try to like close the door. You can't eliminate the negatives. Negatives are gonna happen to you. The more money you make, the negatives don't disappear. You just, you, the, the fact is, what kind of person you have to become to make more money means you'll probably handle negatives better. But the negatives will still happen to you. I promise. So hey, write a list maybe. If this is confusing you, write a list in your car. What's worrying me? What's holding me back? Is it a bill? Is it a bill that I'm, I'm financially stressed? Okay, great. Can I control it right now? If you can control it, control it. If you can't, then stop worrying. I'm late on the bill. Cool. Do you have money to do something about it? Can somebody help you? No. If the answer is no, okay, then stop worrying. You're late already. It sucks. <coughs> You're not going to die. Nobody's going to take you to jail. We'll figure it out. Just stop worrying. But carrying the negative with you in your brain, it's a, it's a very immature thing to do. And telling you, telling someone else, especially if it's in, at work, or even worse to like the person that loves you at home, it's so self-destructing. So Titanic theory, a lot easier said than done. Okay? I want you guys to practice. Catch yourself when you get pissed of something, be like, five minutes. I'm gonna be pissed for five minutes, put a door, I don't talk about it all day, plug in. I'm gonna love my coffee, stay on my shirt. That's it. I'm gonna rock it. Yes. I got a few card failures, it's so, dude, you're allowed, you have permission to be pissed for a few minutes. Julian seen me in the middle of the field being like, I'm pissed and I'm pissed. And I smoked like seven cigarettes back to back. <laughs> I don't smoke anymore. But I was like, this is the solution for me. Think about how dumb. Uh, the solution is to make destroy my lungs. <laughs> it made no sense, but I was mad. Hey, hey 10 minutes later, 10 minutes later, I'm, I'm good. Let's go. Let's do it again. It's going to be a great day. Yeah. It's going to be, a, hey, Julian, second lap. From second lap, we, can, and we did door. like six. Right. I still remember. We still did six from like, from five to seven or something yeah. like that. We left at seven at that time. And it was, it was just crazy. Anyway, point being is, the liar, <coughs> how many of you guys are holding on to a customer that is rude to you and you're talking about this customer the next day? Do you think the customer's talking about you? No. Why do you offer so much importance to them? You let them just arrest your, your, your mental energy. Why? They don't deserve it, it makes no sense. You just do it because it just feels good for somebody to understand that you're also going through problems. <laughs> This is a business opportunity. We want you to understand. It's important the way you handle yourself outside of here and inside here. You know, what we see with parents, with people like Key or like Trey or Go, people have families that are growing a family. We see them handling negatives better because they're just, they have to. You know, Key's kid gives no craps about if people like Frontier or not, he just wants to eat. And Key's not gonna go and sit down and explain because when, when it's a kid, you're like, 
okay, as much as I tell you about the pause IDs that didn't work today, <laughs> the key's like, I want my toys, Dad. And I want new toys weekly. Right. Right now. Right now. So Key's not worried if it's commission or hourly or whatever. Key's going to just do the job. Because when you have a kid to perform for, it typically removes some of your excuses because you notice that exactly. bills don't get delayed. No. So that's why we see parents do well. Does that make sense? Because they got something to fight for. That is, your kid's going to be like, ah, I'm be cool. <laughs> your kid is like, like, like me when you tell me your excuses, just doesn't make you feel bad. That's, look, even Siri. Something went wrong. Anyway, you mentioned my practice this today. There's something that's bothering you. Get it out. Talk to your upline. Nobody's gonna. If you have an upline in the room that you bring something like this up to them, and then they tell you you're a piece of crap, please tell me. We'll switch you. <laughs> it should be okay. Hey, if you go to your upline with the same problem over and, over and they challenge you a little bit, understand that. There might be something you can do about it too. Yeah. Okay? But the point is, can you talk about it for five minutes and eliminate? Can you have the discipline to not open your mouth and pass these negatives, even if it's something funny? Like, oh, today, you know, traffic sucked. Why do you say that? Why do you say that? Who, who does it help other than your own? That. You know? Yeah. Become positive. It's a part of the training. This is a part of the program. You're not going to be perfect. I don't want you to be perfect, but I want you to have this in your mind. I want you when when somebody comes in here, when somebody comes into your life. Has anybody had that experience? Somebody comes into your life lately, and they're like, "Dude, you're more positive." Yeah. Anybody yeah. had that? Yeah. Yeah. You're making progress there, but like, but hey, for us, we know, right? So we kind of sense it more. So you want to become positive in this environment too. It's not easy. And all of a sudden, you are like an owner, and you lose ten thousand dollars in a week but you're still able to come in with a smile because you understand that you lost it. Can you control it? No, no. So you just show up with a smile because you're, you're trained for that. That's very difficult, see what I mean? Mm -hmm. How many of you guys will lose $10,000? That would mean a very big tragic thing in your life. Mm -hmm. Most of us, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we train you to do that here because you might be an owner and you might lose 20 grand or you might lose $40,000. Or I have a friend, an owner that's a friend of mine that lended $26,000 to his cousin. Wow. Construction company. Aaron, Aaron, to his cousin, just gave him $26,000. I mean, wow, you really trust your cousin <laughs> to get it back to you. Good thing you have $26,000, but I consider that lost. <laughs> right. I mean, it's gone. You don't expect me back. I mean, my cousin typically asked me for, I don't know, for a no. cigarette, a drink, right? But for 26 grand? <laughs> Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. You got a confident cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Point being is, hey, this is Titanic 3. If you want to teach it as a system, I just went on it on the long version. Okay? <coughs> but if you want to teach it like a system, uh, we talked about the five steps. It's a system for what? Five steps to a conversation. It's a system for what? It's a system to build impulse. To build impulse. Fuji, it's a system for what? To build more impulse. Law of averages, it's a system for what? Find buyers. So Titanic Theory is a system to compartmentalize. The fact that you have a bad morning should not mean you have a bad day. But we've all had it. Just understand it's okay. The fact that you have a bad field time shouldn't mean you have, you take it home. Whoever's home doesn't deserve it. They don't deserve it. They just don't. Are you, do you have the discipline to shut the door? Sometimes you gotta get in your car alone and yell. That's okay. Or like scream or call somebody that can, you know, that can help you through it. And just dump the negative. You've got to get the poison out of your chest. But after that, are you like, cool? It's okay. Think about it like this. Ask yourself this question. Is it going to matter in five years? The answer is no. Then, hey, get the poison out of your chest. Yell, scream, you know, punch a wall, and then get it out, and then you're good. If it doesn't matter in five years, we, do you agree we should stop right there? Yes. So ask yourself that question a little more often. Will it matter in five years? Will it matter in five years? If I miss the bill twice for my phone, will it matter in five years? Um, honestly, as long as you're, I know you're worried about it, the answer is no. Do you guys not know millions of people that owe 62 bucks to Sprint and they still live? Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. You just can't buy a phone through Sprint. 
but you can live with that. Yeah. By the way, we're going to have a phone program here, so everybody's going to have free phones. If you're 20, 20 bucks. For 20 bucks, 20 bucks, you get a phone. 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, It was 20, but it's over. Some of you guys don't qualify. You make too much money, but some people will. So do you guys think we can use this? Yes! Back at 12, it's 12.20, 12.45, break, one, three, break! break.